My name is uh, Alex Lomov, and I work at Altoros. And uh, my experience with Bosch lasts for three years, and it was an amazing time uh, with lots of uh, challenges and, uh, and discoveries. So uh, I guess it is impossible to talk about Bosch without showing lots of YAML code. Uh, that's why I have my presentation online on speaker dark. I will show you um, okay. I'll show you a link and I suggest you to follow this to follow my presentation using these slides. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my server. So nice. <laughs> Oh, I, I see there is no uh, some fonts here, so I will proceed with the online version. I guess it's better like this, but okay, looks better. Now we are ready. So I am Alex Lomov. I work in R&D department in Altoros, and here's the link you can uh, use to uh, to follow the slide. So, uh, so when you start to work with uh, some technology, the first thing that you see is uh, uh, its logo and Bosch, Bosch has uh, almost official logo. It's a clam, and if I would, if uh, they ask me to create some logo for Bosch, I will. Uh, I think that I will, um, end up with uh, this logo because it shows uh, all my uh, all, all everything that I think about this product. Uh, I think that there is uh, some. Uh, Point, uh, so learning Bosch is sometimes hard, but there is a point of non-return when you can't understand why, why other people uh, don't use this, this product. Uh, but I think that, uh, that lawyers from DC Comics will sue me uh, for using this symbol, and uh, I, I, I would prefer a clam. Uh, the first time I have seen this uh, clam, I was really afraid because I thought that this is a clam and uh, I will uh, find pearl inside of it. And finally, I, I found, uh, found uh, when I got familiar with this product, I, uh, I learned that there is only ruby and gold there, and it was it was great. Um, so this, <laughs> so this is a clam, and uh, this ha it has a shell, and you never know what's inside. And inside it, uh, it inside it, it can be cute, uh, still it can be not. So uh, and fortunately, uh, the Bosch team is developing uh, Bosch with uh, great speed and. Uh, we uh, avoid these dangerous places, and uh, and we have less and less uh, strange str uh, strange bugs in Bosch. So, and I would like I I would also like to compare Bosch with a good book because of the speed uh, it is developed. Uh, because you can uh, open the same code uh, in two weeks, and 
uh, you will find something new and clever there, and you can learn a lot from this. Uh, so this presentation is about Bosch 2.0, and all time I remember Bosch had uh, one before its version. Uh, it has uh, 3,000 releases after first table release, so uh, most of my surrounding uh, didn't uh, believe that there will be any uh, second version of Bosch, and I personally, me, had an idea of uh, uh, ver Bosch versioning. I, I, had, I thought that there is some kind of idea be behind this versioning. I thought that uh, that Bosch will uh, will uh, will add a new version until it will reach a number which will be 1.6180, which represents a golden ratio, and this will be a version of Bosch that that should be ideal. Uh, Still, uh, we have uh, this mysterious Bosch 2.0, uh, and uh, let's see what what behind it. Uh, the thing is that there is no new version uh, called uh, 2.0, and Bosch 2.0 is uh, just a set of concepts and features that uh, are implemented continuously inside of uh, current version of Bosch. And this is a good thing. We can take advantage of all its features right now. Uh, so, a continuous, uh, so this process looks like a continuous evolution and it's, uh, it's uh, I, I think that it is the, the right uh, things to, uh, the, the right uh, way to, um, to create a product because it's it's more closer to nature and you can change it with the small releases uh, and we, you'll have large changes in the in the end so how does the bosch evolution work uh, the very special place that i want you to know is uh, bosch notes project so uh, if you are interested in uh, knowing in what direction bosch uh, goes uh, you you definitely need to visit this uh, project. You can also impact the direction uh, of Bosch development by creating pull request or, or issue in this uh, GitHub project. Uh, in uh, natural, uh, uh, natural uh, in, in, in nature, uh, in evolution uh, has its driving force and it is natural selection. And in Bosch, uh, driving force of uh, evolution is Concourse CI. So Concourse CI is open source uh, continuous integration tool that, uh, that uh, takes uh, pipelines uh, and workflows as a first, um, first class citizens. So this is a very powerful uh, tool, and uh, it's uh, very young, but still it uh, can do everything you need. Uh, last time I had presentation in Santa Clara, I used a concourse to make a slides. Uh, to, I used it as a keynote. So I guess you can find, uh, you can apply concourse everywhere. Um, so, what is new in Bosch 2.0? This is like the most interesting, uh, most interesting part of this uh, presentation. Uh, to begin with, uh, I would suggest you to watch a keynote of uh, Matt Ryder, which was uh, uh, called uh, "Ideas for Manifest Sanity." Uh, he gave very visionary view of the way where uh, Bosch goes and what we need to expect from it. Uh, from it. To start, uh, so the first uh, feature I'm happy about uh, that is, uh, uh, that can uh, give, uh, so th that's the, uh, the one feature that uh, can um, give uh, Bosch new version, I guess, new, uh, new birth. So this is Bosch init. And I guess there is a 
generation of Bosch users who doesn't know what's, uh, what micro Bosch is. Uh, and uh, I'm happy for them, but, but some time ago we needed to store uh, all, uh, Bosch, uh, all Bosch sources inside of every virtual machine uh, that was deployed by Bosch. It was a very strange concept and I was tired to explain this concept to newcomers. And the next great feature was external CPI. And uh, CPI stands for Cloud Provider Interface. And this is a wrapper between a, a Bosch Director and a Cloud API. It allowed to uh, add uh, lots of, uh, lots of, it, it allowed to create a lot of, uh, CPIs for different clouds, uh, clouds, and lots of clouds currently have Bosch support. Uh, before this time, you needed to fork Bosch uh, project and uh, run new uh, and change it, and it was kind of hard. I guess uh, the, some people from this uh, audio, uh, from this room know how how hard it was. And another. A cool feature is called dynamic provisioning, and the idea behind is to bring uh, experience of working with the service broker to working uh, with uh, Bosch. So at some point, uh, you are going to have uh, experience just uh, running, uh, j just running a command, uh, asking Bosch to create some service, and it will run it without uh, any. Uh, without any manifests. Uh, this is large uh, changes and uh, we c I can divide uh, this dynamic provisioning uh, in uh, several uh, features. Uh, cloud config, availability zones, links, and global networking. So the, I, I think that most of you already tried the power of cloud config, uh, which help us to divide uh, uh, to, to divide a manifest on two in two parts. One part is cloud config, which was cloud related, and another uh, manifest itself. It made manifest more more short. It made man manifest more shorter and easier to uh, manage. Uh, cloud config is global for all Bosch director for all deployments that you have in your Bosch and. Sometimes it's not so comfortable, but the, cha cha uh, but the things are going to change. Another uh, cool thing is availability zones. Uh, before we needed to create uh, resource pools, uh, special resource pools, uh, uh, to be able to deploy uh, jobs to different uh, availability zones. Uh, so the, these times has passed, and uh, these availability zones uh, are more Intuit, intuit, intuitive, and also these uh, have uh, interesting, um, subs, uh, in, uh, interesting feature, uh, and the feature is that Bosch is going to balance uh, instances between these availability zones. So, uh, for instance, in this case, there are three instances and Bosch will deploy uh, two instances to one availability zone and one instance to another. And if you change uh, amount of instances, it will rebalance this, uh, the number of these VMs. So to my mind, it's a very cool feature. Uh, another thing is uh, global networking. And global networking, uh, uh, Stands for so global networking is a feature in which Bosch director can assign uh, static APIs to uh, virtual machines by itself, and this uh, this leads us to the uh, world where we no need to declare static APIs no more. I guess that it should be a national uh, uh, national uh, holiday in uh, Bosch world. Because, um, because I guess everybody was tired uh, to maintain static APIs. 
But you may ask uh, how uh, different jobs are going to find each other without knowing their APIs. And the answer is uh, that Bosch provides links. And links is the way uh, how jobs can talk with which it, each other and provide all necessary information, credentials, and, uh, and uh, IPs uh, using these mechanisms. Mechanism. So what, what is the links? Uh, what do they look like? Uh, the answer is that uh, in manifest, we'll only need to uh, show what jobs uh, provide, uh, uh, which job provide link and which job consumes. And Bosch Director will, uh, will allow uh, them uh, to pass this information. And uh, in release templates, we'll have additional functions that will allow us to, uh, to get this information. So this example is taken from uh, concourse, uh, concourse Bosch release, and this is the reason I like concourse because they uh, they take all recent changes uh, from Bosch and apply to their releases, and you can find a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff there. So uh, there is also config server, uh, the thing you need to look into, and this config server is. Uh, is used uh, to store all sensitive data. And the idea is that you can, uh, may, uh, that you can, uh, that our manifest will be something like templates, uh, and Bosch director will ins insert these, uh, um, these template values uh, inside manifest in runtime uh, using config server. So this config server uh, can get uh, the values for properties uh, using uh, two, in two ways. So one of them is uh, using manifest, so the Bosch operator can just run command uh, and use some manifest to, uh, to update the values, and another one is uh, Bosch links. So one release, uh, so one job during the deployment creates some values and put it in config server, and another job can uh, get these values. Uh, the config server is uh, the work on config server is currently in progress, uh, but I hope it will be out soon. And people who uh, try to customize themselves probably uh, probably remember this. Uh, this pain. And uh, this, the thing that is going to save them is called add-ons. Uh, add-ons are, uh, are the, way, uh, the way you can extend stem cells by adding some, uh, by adding some agents or uh, changing stem cells in the way you want. Uh, and you don't need to uh, fork a stem cell builder and bring your changes there and sync these changes with, uh, uh, with upstream every time new release is out. So this is, this is the coolest features uh, from my side. And what else Bosch uh, have? Uh, so at this moment, uh, Bosch and Docker became closer and they have such cute uh, logos of sea creatures, and I can't see reason why they shouldn't be together. And uh, their, the news is that Docker CPI is uh, in development mode, and it will be out soon, I guess. It will, uh, and one more thing, one, one more great thing is that you can run uh, Bosch Lite uh, inside of Concourse. So Bosch Lite currently can be run inside of a uh, container uh, using, using uh, uh, Bosch Lite uh, Docker image. And this means that we finally get to the place where we can get um, integration tests uh, in our CI's pipelines 
without uh, without building some uh, solutions where we'll have Bosch uh, outside of uh, concourse. Uh, the last and the most uh, impressive feature that was uh, uh, announced by uh, Matt, Matt Ryder was called Bosch Bundles. And the idea of this uh, was to make Bosch a packaging tool that uh, will take some kind of bundles with uh, releases and, uh, and manifests. Uh, and it can deploy, uh, it should deploy these bundles with only one command. So thank you for, for this uh, meeting. Uh, I was glad to see so many interested people in Bosch. Uh, and now we can discuss, uh, you can ask questions about the feature I mentioned. And that's it.